Mark Twain was not the smartest person in the world, but he said a few smart things. One of the things that he said was, there are two very significant days in your life. The first is the day that you're born. And the second one is the day that you find out why. That was a strong reaction. <laughs>
also to exist there are many conditions to exist you have to eat you have to drink you have to sleep you need a house you need warmth when it's cold you need to cool off when it's hot the needs just pile on and when you have all you need what have you accomplished you can continue taking up space that's it so if today you have a house and you have the food and you have your water and you have your security and you have your love and you have your support system you have everything you need so what what's the good news you can do it again tomorrow eat again drink again so every human being asks is there a purpose to this because it's embarrassing oh i take up space and i demand resources and for what so i can do it again tomorrow something's wrong with this picture so that's why we ask why are we here what is the question how do you justify existing because existing means taking up space using up resources but when you say what is the purpose of life now you're confused life doesn't need to be justified because life is the purpose so what is the difference between living and existing a teenager is angry but well, all teenagers are angry what are they angry about what's so hard to be 16 if you ask them everywhere in the world they'll tell you the same thing what am i angry about my mother ruined my whole life That's a pretty serious accusation. <laughs> Is it true? No, it's not true. First of all, a teenager doesn't have a life. So you can't ruin it. A teenager has existence. Her life hasn't begun yet. Her existence is not really hers. like this girl teenage girl said i'm so angry at my mother she went into my room <laughs> you have a room it's your room it's your mother's room and she lets you sleep in it so your space which is your existence is not even yours your shoes are not yours your clothing are not yours your phone is not yours oh that's <laughs> that's painful so your mother can't ruin your life before you even have a life your existence your mother ruins yeah because it's not yours it's hers the other th reason mothers don't ruin your life is because life can't be ruined you can ruin someone's existence you take away his house you ruin his existence you put him in jail what have you done to him you ruined his existence now he doesn't have his own space he can't eat what he wants he can't sleep when he wants but you cannot ruin someone's life because life means make a difference if your existence makes a difference then you have justified your existence if you make a contribution then you have answered your question why are we here to make a difference so life is always an opportunity you can't ruin it how come how could your mother ruin your opportunity to to live 
talking to one very angry teenager. And she said, you know, my mother does this, my mother does that. I am not going to let her ruin my life. I said, good for you. Be strong. Don't let her ruin your life. You treat her like a mother no matter what she does. Because then you have a life. But if you can't treat her like a mother, she has ruined you. She did get to you. But don't let her. Just because she's not a good mother doesn't mean you shouldn't be a good daughter. So why are you letting her ruin you? Rebel by being a good daughter when she's trying to discourage you from being a good daughter. Life means if you honor your mother, you have a life. If you need something from your mother, that's just existing. Make sense? All the things we need, everything, every need you feel is just existence. Life has no needs. Life means you are needed. Boy, that's so much better. It's so much better to feel needed than to feel needy. Here's another example. Why are all the other nations that were big and powerful and strong, they're all gone? Jews are still here. That's also Mark Twain. How come other nations came and they made a big noise and they're gone? Gone. And the Jews are still here making big noises. He doesn't have an answer. He's just asking the question. What is the answer? This is so important to the world, not just to us. What did those nations want? The Greeks, the Assyrians, the Romans, the Persians. What did they want? To exist. They wanted to make sure that they will continue to exist forever. And they don't exist. We had a different history. The Jewish people came out of Mitzrayim, out of Egypt, and they're about to go into the land of Israel, or to make it Israel. It was Canaan. What does Moshe say to them? Moshe says, let me tell you what's going to happen. You're going to come into the land, it's beautiful, milk and honey, and you're going to settle down, and you're going to get thrown out. And you're going to be scattered all over the world. And you're going to be in unfriendly countries where you're not welcome. And in, during the day, you won't know what's going to happen at night, and at night you don't know what's going to happen the next day. A terrible description. <laughs> so I can imagine the Jews said, that's it? This is what you have to tell us? Moshe said, what I'm telling you is that your existence is not going to be good. So forget about it. Be busy living. Because existing, not for you. That is a perfect description of our history. Most of our history, we barely exist. <coughs> Most of our history, we don't have our own country. We don't have our own army. We don't have our own place. We don't know where, we, where we're coming or going. Or... Our existence is terrible. But we were so alive in the times when our existence was so terrible. In fact, the worse the existence became, the more life we became. The harder things were to exist, the more life we produced. When we had nothing to eat and no place that was safe to live, we produced the biggest scholars, the greatest tzaddikim, the most fantastic 
services, tzedakah services, supporting the bride, supporting the, the poor, supporting the, the, the dead. We were so alive that we were able to survive the worst existence. So because we didn't try to exist, we still exist. Because we were busy living, that's why our existence is still here. And those who devoted themselves to existing, gone. That is a very powerful message. If you want to have a life, focus on what is needed from you not what you need from someone else. Today, psychologically, we understand this better than ever. Because we now know, where does our anxiety come from? Where does depression come from? Fear. From need. As soon as I think I need, I'm already anxious. I need, I need some money. That's it, I'm nervous. Because what if I don't get? So now I'm worried. If I'm worried, I get into a bad mood. I get into a bad mood, I can't get along with anybody. Can't get along with anybody, I don't know, what's the purpose of making money? <laughs> and then you go in circles. Yeah, but I need money. Well, if I need money, get out of my way. You're making me nervous. <laughs> get out of my way, now you have no friends. Say, forget the money, let's make some friends. You try to make friends, what about the money? You literally become ill. Every need you think you have makes you weak. The solution is, we are not here to get what we need. That makes sense? You were not born to get what you need. That's ridiculous. I am created with problems so that I can solve my problem. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't, I'm, not, I'm not interested in this deal. So now people are waking up and they're asking, why? Why are we here? Why do I need? I don't want to need, because it's making me sick. The reason we're understanding it now is because the needs are greater today than ever. Just too much already. In the olden days, it was very simple. You get up early, and you plow the field, and you put in the seeds so that when winter comes, you'll have what to eat. Simple. So if you don't plow and you don't put in the seeds, you're going to starve and die in the winter. So all you needed was something to eat. So imagine a farmer wakes up his son, 10-year-old boy. Wake up, wake up, we have to go. Go where? To the fields, we have to plow, we have to, it's, it's late in the season, we got to go. So the kid gets up and they go. Because if they don't go, they're going to die. But what happens today when you wake up a 10-year-old? Why, why are you waking me up? Oh, you have to go. Go where? To school. Why, why do I have to go to school? Well, if you don't go to school, you're not going to get into a high school. And then you won't be able to get into a college. So you won't be able to get a job. So you won't be able to make a lot of money. So you're not going to be able to buy a house and pay the mortgage. You're going to end up homeless. You're going to be out on the street. You might get a disease and die. <laughs> the kids are you crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I should get up today. I'm not going to die. I'll be on welfare. <laughs> So that, that whole thinking has become, you're, be, you're being ridiculous. i got to go to kindergarten because otherwise I'll die? doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So let me sleep and leave me alone. 
on the other hand, how many needs do we have today? Okay, we're not going to die, but <laughs> everything they advertise on the television, you have to have. What, you don't have one of those? You got to have one of those. Not the old one, the new one. So how many needs do you have now? Way too many. Way too many. There's this comedian who has a whole routine. He says, why do human beings have houses? Why do you need a house? You need a house because you need a place to keep your stuff. You have stuff. You got to keep it someplace. Keep it in a house. You put a lock on the door of your house to protect your stuff when you go out to get more stuff. Now you have a lot of stuff. You need a bigger house to keep all the stuff. So you put two locks on the door. If you live in Brooklyn, yeah. you put two locks on the door to protect your stuff when you go out to get more stuff. And eventually you can't stand it. You need to get away. Go on vacation. What does vacation mean? No stuff. One little suitcase. That's it. But after a week or two, got to come back to your stuff. It's sickening. It literally makes us ill. Because the needs are just too much. So, you go to a psychiatrist. Say, I'm so anxious, I'm so depressed, I'm so overwhelmed with all these needs, and I need, and I don't have, and I have too much, I have too little. You know what the psychiatrist says? You have no idea how many things you need. Because your mother never really wanted you. You have psychological needs that you never even thought of. You're jealous of your brother. Excuse me, but I came here to get rid of needs, not to find new ones. So, what do you do? You go to religion. Maybe, maybe that'll help. What do you find out when you go to religion? Oh, you think you have needs now? Wait till you die. Then you'll really have needs. Okay, this is not working. <laughs> There's no escape. There's no way out. More needs and more needs, subconscious needs. This is not good. And it's not working, by the way. With all the psychiatry, with all the psychology, we're the most miserable generation ever. Everybody is on anti-anxiety pills. Everybody's on antidepressant pills. Everybody's on Viagra pills. Are, are we functioning at all without medicine? So what is the solution? The solution is, who says you're here to fix your needs? That never made any sense at all. God created you with problems so that you can solve your problems? That's, that's mean. And what if you can't solve your problems? Well, too bad. This is a plan. That's why we keep asking What's the purpose? Something is wrong with this plan. What's wrong is that we think we need. We think we need. That's the beginning of depression. What is the truth? The truth is you are needed. You exist not because you need. And the proof is, did you ask to be born? And if they ask you whether you want to be born, would you have said yes? No. You would say no. Who needs this? We don't ask to be born because we don't need to. 
Did you ever hear a complaint from somebody who wasn't born? <laughs> so, figure it out logically. If I don't need to be here, but I am here, so, conclusion, I'm not here because I need it. I don't need it. So, I'm here because someone needs me. Well, who? And for what? Now we're starting to make sense. And that's why anybody who says what is the purpose of life believes in God. Because if you don't believe in God, don't ask that question. Who says there's a purpose? If God didn't create you, then there is no purpose. You're a mistake. You're an accident. Why do you think there's a purpose? You're looking for something that doesn't exist. The reason we keep looking for a purpose is because we are a purpose. That's what we really are. We are a life that needs to happen. Who needs? Whoever created me. Because I don't. So anybody who asks why believes in a God. Otherwise, who are you asking? And who says there's, a, there's an answer? We are needed, and that's why we need to know who needs us and for what. It's in our DNA. We were created because he needs. So we are the product of a need. It's not our imagination. It's in the DNA. That's why we keep looking, asking, what is the purpose? Not, is there a purpose? If you enjoyed this conversation or this topic, and you're looking for more information, or you want to hear it again from another angle, there is a way to do that. And that is in this book. It's all there. Order it from Amazon. You can read it, reread it, and share it. Speaking of good news, there's a wonderful retreat coming up, the National Jewish Retreat, run by the JLI, Jewish Learning Institute. It's going to be August 9th through the 14th in the Miami area, in a five-star hotel, best speakers, best lectures, best classes, best accommodations, and best food. So if you have those five days free, or any one of those five days free, think about joining us. It's going to be great for body and soul. And there's actually a discount if you put my initials in there, RMF. There's a little discount for those who are already committed, already studying, already interested. Google it, look it up, Jewish Retreat, JLI. And uh, hopefully we'll see you there.